Hey guys, it's Jenny with Vine Go and also the Go Box. Hope you're having a great week. Stuck at home like most of us and maybe looking for a project to do something around the house. Make sure you're doing something for yourself too. I know it's really easy to get in like massive cleaning mode. That's what I want to do, but I haven't had time to do it. I've been doing a lot of art and a lot of uh, packing up of art projects and shipping things out and filming a ton of videos. We filmed one yesterday and the day before and then here's today. Today we're gonna be painting Mountain Wishes, which is a really popular painting in our studio. And uh, so it was one of the ones we selected to offer as a kit that we can ship to you. Um, if you're just tuning in, you don't know what this is all about. Uh, it's basically we do step-by-step -step painting while you hopefully have some kind of beverage. And um, we ship you the canvas, the paint. If you want brushes, we can do that. Direct to your address and then you can log on and paint along with me on the step-by-step -step video. So let's go ahead and talk about what we need to do this project. I have a 11 by 14 canvas, but if you are providing your own pro products, you can paint on whatever you want. I had someone follow along yesterday with us and she painted on a rock. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, then I have this weird little easel thing, but most often I'm having the canvas flat on the table when I'm teaching. But Paul thought this thing would be fun to play with. He built it. That's probably why he thought it would be really good. <laughs> I've got three brushes. Now I like to use a combination of round and flat brushes. And I usually just have large, medium, and small. And maybe some of you have all flat brushes or you've got a set more like this. It really doesn't matter as long as you just have a large, a medium, and a small brush. That seems to conquer everything that we need. And then I have a paper towel to dry my brushes on, a old Van Gogh mug <laughs> that I use to clean my brushes off. Yours doesn't have to be a Van Gogh mug, but mine is. And then let's talk about our acrylic paint colors. So these are just four colors to get through this painting. Black, white, phthalo blue, which is a deep indigo blue. This color is called raw sienna, or I've seen it uh, called yellow ochre. I just call it butterscotch. I think it sounds prettier. <laughs> so that's those are the, the four that I have. Now, if you want to add in any other colors with this and make it a lot more colorful, you absolutely can. There's no reason why not. It's a very whimsical painting and can definitely have, if you've got other paint left over from another project, like our turquoise Bahama blue would be really fun to throw in here. And I think that's it. Let's try to have a wonderful time painting. It's semi-abstract, pretty easy painting. The thing you'll struggle with in this are probably fir trees, but they get glazed over with a fog. <laughs> so even if they're imperfect, which they should be, there's no real perfect trees out in nature. Um, don't worry about it. So I want to do a little birthday shout out to Trinity. 40th birthday. Um, I know Trinity and her friends are doing this as a Skype project together for Trinity's 40th birthday. So cheers to you, Trinity. Happy 40th. I've got a mimosa here and it's delicious. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this painting, we really just go for it. We start with a tree line with fir trees in it because we need those to dry before we come in and glaze over everything. Let's go ahead and take our biggest brush, or you can use like your medium sized brush if you want. But I, I like to use a flat brush for this because I want to use this thin edge. I'm gonna dip it in my water cup, kind of brush it around on the bottom of the cup just to loosen up and wake up those bristles, especially if it's a brand new brush. They usually have a coating on them that keeps them really stiff and it'll just soften up in the water. So that's a good thing to have. Let's go ahead and dry it off. Just blot it a couple times on each side. We're gonna mix a color now. So this painting is almost monochromatic. It's very, uh, in, in the photo it looks very black and white, but it's, uh, it's got the, the blue and the gold in there too. First color I'm going to mix is I'm going to mix the black and blue together. Maybe like two parts blue, one part black. So it's going to be really dark, but it's going to definitely have like a midnight blue tone to it. So here I've kind of brushed it 
around and you can get a sense for what the color looks like. I never mix enough. I almost always have to go back and make more. And I don't stress too much if it's not the exact same shade, the, set, the second mixing. I'll set this palette aside. And I'm going to go ahead. We're going to start in this upper third of the canvas. We have about, I'm just looking at a photo here. It's been a while since I've taught this one. I have about a third of sky showing that has some trees kind of poking up in there. And then the bottom two thirds is dense forest and that really makes those wish uh, dandelion flowers pop. So let's go ahead and use the skinny edge of your brush. I'm going to paint what looks like, don't overthink it, <laughs> it looks like a sound wave. What this is, I'm gonna go all the way across. What this is, is this is the dense forest where we don't see individual trees, but we definitely see the rough tops of the trees. So every once in a while I might climb up, every once in a while I might come down a bit. What I want you to think about more than trees, I want you to think about this as a sound wave or a heart rate monitor, a very erratic heart rate monitor. I have my brush literally glued to the canvas. I'm not lifting it up at all. I'll brush, 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 brush until I run out of paint. We'll clean up this bottom edge in a bit. Using the thin edge. Let me see what it looks like if I use a round brush. Make my medium size one just so I can show you. Depending on what brushes you have, it's okay. There are lots of different brushes that will make this painting happen. So round brush, that works pretty good. Same thing, we're just sort of scribbling up and down while your brush is glued to the canvas. And like I was saying, this all of this gets glazed over and it, it sort of is visible through what looks like a fog. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfection here. In fact, in fact, a little sloppy is good. Don't, don't even let your brain start thinking stressful thoughts. It's all good. So it is kind of going to look like grass. And yeah, this is one of those paintings that we really just right from the beginning, just go for it and just paint right on the canvas. A lot of times we're building up to that, but this time the way this one starts is this way. So before I get going too much further, I've got this one tall stand of trees here I want to clean up. I'm going to brush down just a little bit. I'll come down to not quite halfway, but just a bit below these trees. We're going to come over this later with the foreground trees. But for now, we'll just clean this up here. And I need to mix a little more paint. If for whatever reason you fall behind a little bit, just put me on pause, catch up, and then we can come back and work on it together. When I'm teaching via video, if, if any of you have been into the studio or a studio like Van Gogh, where it's a wine and paint studio, the instructor has a lot of time to kill by getting down off the stage and walking around and seeing how people are doing and commenting on their paintings. And that's how I kill time when I'm teaching. So then by the time I've made my circle and I come back to my painting, then I, know I can look, I look at everybody's painting and I know I'm, I'm ready to move on because everybody else is ready to move on. I can't do that on video. I just kind of just have to tell you, pause me <laughs> if needed. So that looks like a pretty good tree line, pretty good abstract tree line in the distance. We use this technique in a lot of landscapes that we do. I'm going to take a little sip before I teach you actual fir trees. I was looking for a sheet of paper. I do have one. Let me grab it here. I normally keep a little pad of paper in the office, but I think it's, I think it got brought into another room earlier today. So luckily, I have some paper here. Hi, Suki. My 14-year-old dog decided to come in and visit. 
I wish you could see her. She's a Shiba Inu. They're a Japanese breed. Orange, look like a fox. Very, very uh, demanding, opinionated dogs. <laughs> and they're about medium size. I would lift her up, but she does not like to be lifted up at all. Okay, so let's talk about uh, fir trees. We've got our line here, our tree line. It's just kind of meandering across the canvas. And I want to have some trees that poke up above that. And what these are supposed to be, these are closer to us than this. This dense forest is way far away. And then these fir trees are just, <laughs> the dog's making weird noises. They're just uh, poking out here and they're in front of that. So I usually will go through and draw all the tree trunks first, but I'm gonna just draw a blown up tree here. We really only have to draw about a third of a tree because the bases of them are gonna be covered up by this stuff. So I draw my tree trunk, make it as high as I want, at the top, I use the corner of my brush and I dab on maybe like six or seven little dots at the top. So what this is, is if you've ever had a Christmas tree in your house, you have that one spike that hopefully sticks straight up so you can put your Christmas star or angel or whatever you put at the top of your tree on there. It's almost never straight in nature. I know at the Christmas tree farms, they have to train them to grow that way. But we can paint our trees as straight as we want. <laughs> And so I do, I make that, that little furry top that sticks up. I think my dog is bumping the camera, I apologize. <laughs> so I want to use the corner of my brush again and I'm going to tap down below that little stand of dots I did, a little short mustache. So it's not very wide. And it looks like an arrow pointing straight up. Then I turn my brush and I'm using it the whole width of it and I'm literally just going to go back and forth Kind of fun to watch. Don't get too wide. I almost started getting a little too wide. It's real easy to suddenly have this really super wide triangular tree. And I'm not going to go down any further because literally my sound wavy thing is going to be right there. And one thing to avoid, I'll draw out something that's common in the studio. It's really common to end up with the tree that we call the fishbone. So at the top you've got that. So one thing that's missing is is the, the dots at the top that go up. But then every tree bough is spaced equally apart and there's too much space in between and it just looks like a not a happy little tree. It's it's more like a sad, pathetic tree that needs needs some loving. And you can give it some loving. You can fix this up. If you end up with the tree like that, you're in the company of a lot of people. It's super common. And it is fixable. It's, in fact, it's pretty easy to fix. I will, at the studio, I'll go around and, and I'll just, sometimes I'll just take people's brush and be like, you want me to show you? And of course, they always do. They love it. And so what I would do here is I'd make the little dabby top there. And then I would maybe make these sort of curl up a little bit on the edges. I do like it when they either go straight across or sort of flip out a little bit rather than drooping downward. And I'm just gonna go through and dab in lots of little tree boughs. So I'm just blotting out what was there originally. And there, I almost like this tree a little better than that one. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> If you're using a round brush, that should work too. In fact, it might even work better. I guess we'll see. So round brush here, tree trunk, dab, 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 dab. Tap out a little mustache and then just start zigzagging your way across. Just short little taps of the brush without a lot of pressure. So if you push really hard, you're gonna get big blobby brush strokes. If you give it a tiny little tap, you can control how detailed these are and how, how tiny, how fine and small. So the round brush gives it a 
definitely more of a furry texture, which is cool. Maybe do some practice trees on your own on a little sheet of paper. See which brush that you have that you like better. Put me on pause if needed, but I'm going to go ahead and proceed onward. This is getting dry really quick. One thing I like about acrylic paint is it does dry within minutes. Usually about 10 minutes, it'll be almost completely dry. I'll set this aside. I'm going to use my big brush I was using from the beginning. My big old flat brush, but feel free to use what you got. Round brush, flat brush, hair brush. Just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to plant some trees. So sometimes I'll make some tall that come up close to the top of the canvas. Then maybe I'll make a shorter one. And here's what I want to do. I want to place some of these right next to each other rather than like having this evenly spaced distance between each one because you can end up making it look like it's too planned out. Like it's an HOA. We don't want that. We don't need no HOA here. I live in one of those and boy, it's a fun experience. 16 years of getting letters if we leave our garbage out. <laughs> getting letters if we have a few weeds in our yard. Getting letters if there's moss in our driveway. <laughs> Getting letters if our Christmas lights stay out a couple weeks longer than they should. So right now it looks like I have a volcanic forest. Maybe uh, if you're a little nervous about painting the trees, maybe just do a few tree trunks. I know I'm saying it now after I've done several. Just go one at a time. I'll do about this many. Let's let's count how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight tree trunks of varying heights, and some are closer together and some are further away. Remember, these are going to be glazed over. They are going to become ghost trees. So they are going to, by the time this painting is done, a lot of times we're worried about every single step we're working on. But by the time the painting is done, all the focus is going to be on those dandelion wish things and you won't even notice these trees ever never notice them again <laughs> I promise okay now I'm going to make the little dots at the top and you all just go through and do each of those use whatever brush feels good maybe you have a tiny little itty bitty brush that you feel more comfortable using than just the corner of a, of a big brush light pressure always light light pressure So what I'm making right now kind of reminds me of like little stalks of wheat or lavender. They have the, the texture at the top. I like to just get this part out of the way first rather than doing each individual tree one at a time. So that takes care of that. Take a sip of your liquid courage. Mm, I love mimosas. I haven't had one in a while. Sometimes champagne doesn't make my, it gives me a heartburn. So we'll see tonight. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to use the corner of my brush and tap out a wee little mustache at the top of each tree. Again, like I said, I just like to go through while I'm working on, while I'm in one mode, I might as well do them all. <laughs> you can use a littler brush if this, this one feels too bulky. Can use one of your round brushes. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of crosses right now. Like it's some kind of goth painting. Here we go. We've got the start of a Halloween painting for 2021, which I hope gets here soon because 2020 sucks. It just sucks right now. Right now our studio is closed, as a lot of you already know. And that's been interesting. It's interesting because we didn't really have any time to prepare. It was just like the governor said, any business that has people come in and gather your clothes for four weeks. So we've been, we've been shifting gears definitely and doing the videos and that's been a, it's been good so far, so far. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the rest of our tree boughs. You can turn your brush and use the skinny edge or you can use one of your small brushes. 
I am literally almost just zigzagging back and forth. I end up not being able to see much of my tree trunk. And then it just, once you get down to the woods, just leave it. Let it, you don't have to paint anymore. We're just painting like half, half trees and one third trees, occasional two thirds tree. We get to do some more of these later. <laughs> Yay! So this is good practice for you. Painting fir trees is good practice. The more you practice these, even if you're just doodling while you're on the phone with someone and you just have a pencil, practice drawing them because all of that practice will build up to the point that suddenly you're comfortable painting trees and you can do them fast without even thinking much about it. Fir trees are one of the hardest things for people to paint right off the bat. So if you are feeling like you're odd man out, please don't. There's a whole bunch of other people who will be struggling with this as well. And I used to for a long time, even in the last, uh, let's see, I've had Van Gogh for nine years in October. Uh, I've learned a lot since opening the studio and I've been painting for 25 years, maybe even 26 years now. I started really young because my grandparents were both painters. So as soon as it was discovered that I had talent, it was highly encouraged. And um, uh, yeah, trees, I have improved on trees in just the last years of having Van Gogh. Teaching, for some reason teaching him makes you think about him more and think about how you word things more and, and notice them more. We drive up to the gorge a lot to Skamania Lodge, because I'm an artist in residence there. We teach a lot of classes up there. And we're surrounded by fir trees on the whole right up there. And it's a lot of times I'll just look at them. Sometimes I play a game and I try to look for the perfect tree that everybody seems to think exists. Like, they'll say, my trees aren't perfect. And I'll say, you know what? I've never seen a perfect tree. <laughs> it's hard to find. They're always, especially up there, because everything's really wind blown. That looks pretty good. It, it's, you know, we've got this top part of the painting done. I, I like this stage. I like it with the white in the, in the background. I think that looks really cool. We're not going to leave it that way, though. We need to let these dry. So what, what I'll do, I started washing my brush, but you don't need to. Because what I'm going to do is we're going to work from the bottom. Actually, no. Sorry. Thinking here how I want to plan this just for drying time. When I'm teaching online, it's a little different for drying time. So I think what I want to do, I'm going to paint from the bottom up to about here. We want to keep this all untouched because we, we are going to be glazing light, light color over the top. And if any little bit of this is wet, you'll get blue, bluish black streaks and that won't be your favorite thing. <laughs> In fact, you probably won't like that at all. So we're going to work from the bottom up, just filling in the whole bottom part of the canvas with this blue black color. You might need to mix some more. I'm automatically washing my brush, like I said, but you don't need to because that's the color we were just using. Black and blue mixed together. I'll just start at the bottom. Any kind of brush strokes you want here. If you're really frustrated, you can make angry scribbles or some kind of angry brush strokes and then cover over it. Or you can draw doodles. Practice more trees. Our goal is just to get this filled in with a solid color. And for the edges, these canvases are, the canvas is wrapped around and stapled on the back, which is great because then when you hang it up on the wall, you don't have these ugly staples showing. But you can wrap the color around the sides and the top as you go. And then at the very end, paint the bottom edge. It's just black and blue. And then when you do hang it up, which I hope you will, at least for a day, <laughs> 
Maybe hang it up in your basement, depending on how it turns out. Um, it's painted all the way around the sides, and it really does make it look nice. They do, Michael sells frames, probably any frame shop would sell frames for 11 by 14. So if you do really love the way your painting turns out, which I hope that's the case, then you can frame it definitely at one of those shops. Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Frame Central. I'm trying to think of all the frame shops. Aaron Brothers is now Michael's. And uh, that's a good, great place to go as well. Suki, did you come back to visit? <laughs> she can't hear much anymore. And she, her vision is definitely starting to go a little bit. But she always is coming in here. She's always looking for me because I'm the one who gives her T-R-E-A-T-S. And so I'm her person. And it's, it's kind of sad because it's all food related. <laughs> I'm her person because of food. But she can't, a lot of times can't hear anything. So she's wandering around looking for me. And she'll come in here and she'll bump the camera. And her tail, they have curled tails, so her tail will like hook on a dangling cord. Last night was comical, actually. All right. So this right now, it looks like two different colors, but it's only because this is wet. And if you've ever painted a wall in your life, you know that the paint dries a little bit, usually a little bit lighter than what comes right out of the can or the paint tube. And so once this dries, it will, it will uh, match up with this one. I'm going to just sort of kill some time here. So I'm going to paint the edges because I really want, I can see there's still some wet spots here up in the trees. And I need those to be ultra dry. Now you can, if you have access to a hair dryer, you can uh, blast your canvas up here with the hair dryer. You don't need to dry down here, but up here, blast it with the hair dryer for a good 30 seconds. That will take care of everything. It'll dry it up really nice. Or just take your time down here. When, it, when you're done with this, go back and give it another coat if you want. Just something to kill the time. Get on your phone, chat with your friends. Go refill your beverage if you are partaking in beverage. You know, it doesn't always have to be liquid courage. I had, I painted with tea the other night. It was very nice. Just washing my brush off. When I wash it off, because it's got so much dark pigment on it, I'm going to really lightly poke it on the bottom of the, well, I shouldn't say poke it because we don't want it, we don't want to poke straight up and down because that'll flare your bristles out. I'm just like brushing it firmly across the bottom of the cup and then I'll dry it off. And there's still going to be a little bluish paint on there. Don't worry about it. Just dry it off. Here's what I do. I'll take and I'll put my paper towel and just pinch it and pull the brush out. And then that, that even gets more paint pigment out. If you want to change your water out and start with a completely fresh cup, you can do that. There's time. You can always pause me and do that. And I want to talk about, while well, I'm killing time here. This is drying along some. Um, I want to talk about this painting and why I designed it. I'm looking at a picture of it on the computer. I don't actually have the, the original painting with me here. It's at the studio. Um, first of all, I, I really liked the idea of doing a monochromatic painting, which is you know just one or two colors, but only this one I added a couple more. So it's a qu quadrochromatic. <laughs> and um, there were there's a photograph I saw that inspired this. And I think it was taken in Finland, actually. And the, the flowers on it were not, if I remember right, they were not dandelion puffs. They were some other kind of um, 
mountain flower that grows that looks like it's straight out of a Dr. Seuss book. They're just real fluffy and fun. But I thought, you know, I, I love doing things with little dots because I think with the, the nat natural trees, having something kind of whimsical and magical looking with lots of little tiny white dots would look really good. So that's what I went with. And of course, I had to call it Mountain Wishes because to me it feels like it's on a mountain somewhere. Um, I am born and raised in Oregon, so this totally looks like the Mount Hood National Forest. And, uh, yeah, Mountain Wishes. I've never actually done this in a different color palette, but maybe sometime I will and show you guys what it looks like. Actually, Trinity, your group, I know you guys are doing different colors because you had requested some extra funky colors just because we're kind of in dark days right now. <laughs> with this COVID-19 thing. If you want to share your completed paintings, you can email them to us at Bingo uh, or just use the chat feature on our website and send them through. And that would be kind of fun to see. All right. I think just running my fingers over up here. I think it's dry enough. I don't have any lift off happening. <laughs> no smearing or smudging. Remember, you can always use your hair dryer if you need it to turbo dry. And now we're going to glaze and it's going to feel really weird because you're just painting over these trees you worked so hard on. Maybe to you that will be a good thing because maybe you don't love your trees and you kind of want the feel of painting them out. <laughs> this will give you that. But because it's light color going over dark, we're still going to be able to see the shadow of the, they're little, like, like I called them ghost trees earlier. That's kind of what they are. Little creepy ghost trees in the background. Let's go ahead and mix the gold color, which is the raw sienna, with white. And we want to make, I'll just pull some white aside and mix a little dab of this with it. I want to make a light beigey color. If you have more gold, and you want it to be more, you want your painting to be a little more warm in color. Just add more gold and you're fine. It's, it's totally okay. I've got a little tiny bit of blue residue coming out of my brush. But you know what? That's just going to tint this a little tiny bit. And that's okay. You can see it there mixing in. Everything is usually okay. But I usually will work with all kinds of stuff and make my way through it. I've had a lot of challenges over the years. The biggest challenge I had to date was teaching a painting up in the gorge at Scamania Lodge and they wanted us to paint outside. <laughs> they had to sandbag our easels and we had to lock our canvases to the easels and then while I was teaching halfway through a painting my painting blew off my easel and landed face down on my paint palette which was full of wet paint. And I got to show 15 people on the fly how to fix that. That was fun. <laughs> All right, so let's start in the upper left corner. And I'm just going to go across the sky, the very top. Starting to cross over some of my trees already, the taller trees. Here's where you could see if you want to do a little more gold in your paint. Or you can leave it this way. Now I'm going to start brushing outward. The reason I'm doing this is because we're actually going to put kind of a sun ray thing on here later. Oh, I picked up a little blue. Not a tragedy, that's all right. You might pick up little tiny bits of the bluish background for whatever reason. Maybe there was a spot that wasn't 100% dry Usually you can just sort of wipe that off with a towel and start over. Or you can just work with it. You can turn it into a little gray streak in the sky that's a cloud. Because that's usually what I try to do. I try to turn it into something else. The painting sort of plans itself that way. <laughs> I don't want to come close to where it's still wet. But do come down into, into this middle area that, that should be as dry as the trees were. Or drier, because we did it first. 
we're going to overlap that with some foreground trees. All right, I'm going to smooth this out just a little bit by going back and forth. You can always come on and add more paint. Oh, there's some more blue creeping up there. I can even see on the original, the photo that I ended up in the same situation where I had a little blue paint deciding to make its debut in the sky <laughs> streaked in there. I'm going to show you what it would look like if I said, you know what? I want more color on this. So I'll take just a little gold and brush it in there back and forth like this, a little short choppy back and forth, almost scooping motion. Here's what happens. It looks like a cloud. There are some times I've been up on the mountain and the sky literally looks a lot like this. It's kind of golden because there is a sunset happening somewhere, but it's also overcast. It could also be a forest fire, <laughs> hopefully not. But yeah, feel free to, if you really wanna warm up the painting just a bit, add a little more gold. And I, I literally took it without washing my brush. You can see my brush had the beige color on it. I dipped it right in, right in the gold paint. I didn't dip it in that anymore. And like I said, you just kind of do this scooping back and forth, go over and over and over it till it sort of partially blends into the sky. And this is one of those things that, yeah, you stand back from your painting a little bit and it looks like you've got this golden overcast sky. Right now it really looks like, it reminds me a lot of the way the gorge looked a couple years ago when the little boy lit the whole gorge on fire. That's sad. Now I want to go back and add more white to the top. <laughs> no, you can, uh, it, once we have the wish flowers on, it, it takes on a happy look because right now, yeah, it's, it's just very, it's very dark. And then we've got this golden fiery looking sky up here. So right now it's kind of like, what the heck sort of thing am I supposed to be feeling here? <laughs> it's going to climb out of that hole and become a happy little painting with little whimsical wish flowers. I just, on the fly, decided I wanted to bring this glaze down just a tiny bit more. Right about there. Now, if you are thinking because I said forest fire and now you can't unsee that and you want to whiten that back up, I figured I should show you guys that because I know what, sometimes I say things that I, I'm thinking but I shouldn't say. <laughs> and I will take a little to show you. I'm, I actually like mine the way it is, but I'm, to, if you want to add more whitish back into the sky, do the same thing that we did with the gold with white. And again, it's going to look like some cloudage going on in there. You could, uh, even if you like your golden sky, add a couple bits of this here and there. It's fun practice. And if you have a tree you don't care for, do this over that one. It will cover it up even more. There. If you want, I'm going to wash the brush off now. And I'm going to dry it, set it aside. And I'll show you something that is t entirely optional. I can vaguely see it on the original painting. And I know I did it because I remember doing it. You can finger paint a sun. So I would take and I would dip my finger in, pick up a tiny bit of white paint. Maybe dot it off on your palette to knock off any excess. Oops. Ooh, I hate it when I roll the handle of the brush into the paint. And when you pick it up again, it's like, ah! Okay, so white on the finger. Pick out where you want your light source to be. I'll just put it right up here. And just go around and around. You'll feel the paint. Make sure it's not over a tree because that wouldn't make sense. You'll feel the paint drying off of your finger. And my sun here is about a quarter size, but I've done them as big as like a ping pong ball. 
So I could have put it right here. I just don't want to put it over the tree, obviously. That wouldn't quite make sense. And then later on, we'll take some white and we'll streak it outward from the sun and create this really cool um, sun, sun ray system thing that comes through there. All right. I'm liking it so far. Like I said, it's been a while since I painted this. We had our, I probably haven't painted this since we had our Tiger Studio and that closed in 2018. <laughs> so it's been a while. We're gonna jump around a bit and we're gonna jump down to here. This should be dry now. I know mine is. No paint picking up on my hands. That's old. <laughs> um, if it's not dry, you can pause the video and let it dry or dry it with a hairdryer and come back. But I'm ready to, to move on. And what I'm going to paint here are down on the ground, there's a whole bunch of little white orby like circles. And then we have two big wish flowers that come up out of those. We're not gonna worry about the, the dan, I don't know if they're called wish flowers or, we, and as, as a kid we always just used to call them a wish. Oh, there's a wish. We'll paint those later, but let's get the little mound of glowing orbs down here. They're pretty fun to paint, and that is what makes this a very whimsical painting. And there's a couple ways you can do it. I will use either, probably my medium sized brush. I'll show you, if you have a flat brush, here's what they're gonna look like. You just kind of spin it into a little circle. Let it run out of paint as it gets around the edges. So it looks like a glowing firefly or something like that. If you have a round brush, it should work the same way. Round and around, and round. And you can play around with very little paint on your brush. Let's see what they look like that way. They'll be a little more hazy. I do like to have the combination of really hazy ones with really bright white opaque ones. And these are just sort of stacked up on the ground. All right, just adding to my pile here. You can design the layout of your pile however you want. I know on the original, I just kind of mounted it up in the center Definitely put some over those other ones that you put on. So you see how now it's kind of stacked on top here. We don't, they, these don't leave space. They're just all crowded in together. Like dust balls. They're not discriminatory. They all collect together. We all know that. I've had a lot collect this week because I've been so busy. And I have two very shedding dogs. And I, tomorrow is my day to clean those. I told Paul, I'm not shipping any go boxes out tomorrow. I need to clean the house. <laughs> but I know myself and I probably will ship some out anyways because I also hate having unfulfilled orders sitting at home. I wanna get those done and out the door. There. I like this uh, painting because right in the very beginning, we've got this kind of natural feel and then it's like, whoa, what are you doing down here? <laughs> We're creating a fairy forest. So remember, some of these can be quite large and some can be tiny. You can also, remember we finger painted our sun up there. You can finger paint some of these. Maybe I'll just dot some dots on here. And while they're still wet, then I'll go through and smudge them into circles. So as I'm doing this, my finger is going in larger, larger concentric circles, letting the paint dry off. And sometimes I'll put like a random one up here. Some little escapey. You decide if you like doing this with the brush more or if you like uh, using the, your finger and play around with that. I feel like I have a, a decent amount. I can always go back and add more if by the time I get a lot of the other stuff done, I feel like maybe it's too scarce and I need some more. But I think it feels pretty good to me right now. Here's what I wanna do before we go too far. Your middle size brush, you can use either the brush end or you can use the handle end. 
and I'm going to put a solid opaque white dot in the center of most of these. So if you use the handle, you just dip the handle in the white paint and literally just use it like a rubber stamp. Just stamp. You do about six of them or so and then the brush is gonna run out of paint. If you wanna use the brush end, everybody kind of has their own preferences. Just make a, paint a little dot, swirl it into a tiny circle. This is the nucleus of the wish flower. <laughs> When I do paintings with fireflies, this is how I paint them. Only usually they're kind of a yellowish. So I'm not actually having to paint fireflies or teach fireflies. They're just suggestions of fireflies. I've done this technique too with snowflakes and it works great. And then what I'll do sometimes is draw the snowflake coming out from this opaque center dot. So I'll have like the the six sides and, and make all the little decorations on it. That's an idea as well. I love doing Christmas paintings. I thought, you know, with all this weirdness going on, would people be weirded out if I put out some Christmas paintings? <laughs> Probably not. I, a lot of uh, people have talked about putting their Christmas lights back up just for the happiness factor. And I'm game for that. If I didn't live in such a strict HOA, Tell you what, I'd have my Christmas lights back on. Maybe even my Christmas tree back up because I have one of those year-round trees that uh, basically it's a fake tree. We got it when our dog was a puppy and my daughter, who's now 14, was an infant. <laughs> and the dog used to go chew up the pine needles and then I'd find them vomited back up on the carpet somewhere. So it's like, oh, we're going to fake tree. We'll just do it this one year, I promise. And we've put it up every single year. But we've also gotten some real trees along with that. Because I, I love the pine smell. That's something you can't get with the fake tree. Well, not a, not a real. I know sometimes they make these pine scented things that they can hang but in the tree, but it's not the same. Okay, we're doing great. Now we're gonna focus, switch our focus back up to here. And let's go back to whatever brush you used when you made your sound wave originally. I was using the thin edge of this brush. I'm gonna mix up the black and blue together again. And what we are doing, we're doing another sound wave, I know. You guys probably thought we were done with that. So this is kind of a forest. We want to do it below that one. So it's going to start way down here. This is a forest that is nearer to the viewer here. Same technique. This is going to cover up this line where it goes from light to dark. And it's also going to look like this forest is, it, it just gives some perspective. Like this, this part of the woods is nearer to us. I think I'll show us how to show us all how to put some highlights on some of these trees because I think it'll look nice that way. But we need it to dry a bit. So work your way across the canvas all the way across with your sound wave or heart rate monitor. Whatever helps you think less tree thoughts and more paint a jaggedy edge. <laughs> I try to have the students think of different things rather than what we're painting. And I know some, one of my teachers I, I had for a while, one of the instructors I hired, she'd have people turn their canvases upside down and teach them to draw certain shapes and they would just copy her and then she'd flip her canvas back around and suddenly they had drawn a fox. So it does work. It's uh, maybe a little mental trick. I'm gonna just brush down into here. As that dries, it'll blend together. 
And if you feel like you need to clean up the edge of this, you can do that. Sometimes what I find with mine is it's too hedge-like where oh, all these are like the exact same height and it looks like someone came through with clippers and cleaned it all up. I don't want that. I have a tendency to do that. So I'll come in and forcibly make some taller ones. They can even cross over some of these back ones. It would be totally okay. It will work just fine. All right, that's gonna work pretty good. It will look better with some highlights. And we are going to draw about three or four of these trees coming out of here. And I will try to place them in areas where these aren't. So like right here would be a great one. Right here would be a great spot for one right here. They're not gonna go as tall as these. They're gonna be, in fact, they're just gonna go above this. It, we're repeating what we did up here, right here. So whichever brush was your friend when you were painting those fir trees, that's the one you wanna use. These will also get a little bit of a glaze over them because we're gonna come back, it's optional, but we'll come back later if you did the sun. Even if you didn't do the sun, you can still do a sun ray that comes out and some of the rays from that will totally glaze out a bit of those trees. I am going to use that color, the black and blue. I'm using my big flat brush, but feel free to use a round one, a smaller one. Everybody has different preferences and everybody's going to have one that feels better in their hand and you're more confident with than others. So let's see, we've got, I've got four foreground trees. So I'll plant one right here. Boom. Not worried about the crookedy tree trunk. It's gonna get covered up with tree boughs. And I thought here would be a good one. Again, they're a little shorter than these guys. Here's a good spot for one. Maybe I'll make it a little taller because I noticed these are all ending up the same height. I don't want to go too tall, but I definitely don't want them all the same height. And then right over here is a good spot for one. There. Then at the top, use the corner of your brush or the very tip of your round brush if you're doing that. Make your little row of six, seven dots here. Dot, 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 dot. Some of you have probably watched Bob Ross do trees. He rocks those things out so fast and he uses a fan brush, which I don't have a huge amount of experience with. I've used them a little bit, but I found that I'm a little too harsh when I clean them so they don't ever go back to the shape they're supposed to be in. But he just rocks them out really fast with a fan brush. So I'm gonna use the corner of the brush again and tap out that tiny little mustache at the top. We're gonna give it those the goth like crosses here in the background, like I talked about. This is the goth painting. We can paint a little raven up on one of those. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'll turn the brush this way and dab in sort of a zig tight, tight little zigzaggy pattern. Feel free to use a smaller brush if you want. There, first one done, boom. Again. I like the little noise it makes. It's like Very nice. Feeling good about this now. I don't have any major glaring errors. A lot of times I'll get like a, a drop of the dark paint somewhere out here <laughs> where I don't want it. It's fixable if that happens. If it does happen, take your rag and wipe it off. Maybe a little bit of dampness to the rag would help. And then take a clean, damp brush and sort of scrub at it like you would be scrubbing a dish. And it should scrub right off if it's fresh paint. Or it should scrub off enough to the point that you can come back in and touch it up real easy. 
One last tree. Ugh. This one's a happy, ugly tree. The one side ended up kind of blunt. A nicely placed sun ray. <laughs> we'll fix that up. Or I could come in with my small brush, give it some SOS if I can. I don't know, I think it's just not gonna help it too much. Clean, clean, clean. There. Starting to look a little happier altogether. Oops, got my brush away from there. You can definitely see now that the top is kind of tying in with the bottom a little bit, even though they're completely different. Much natural, much more natural landscape up here. And then we've got this whimsical party down here. We are going to bring those two together. Yin and yang. Take a sip, you deserve it, you earned it. Whatever it is. Mimosa, wine, beer, soda, coffee, tea. All right, take a breath. Whew, we did it, that part. And now we're gonna start adding more of the whimsical touch to it with lots of little dots. But first I want to make our wish flowers. I draw them first and then I draw the stems to them in a, a little bit later. So decide where you want to place them. I would say try to make them different heights. In the original, I've got like this one's a little taller. This one's right about here. So slightly different heights. They're done just the same way as these. So I was using my round brush here. But you can also, if you have a flat brush like this, that works just as well. In fact, when I did the original, I know that's what I used. And my wish flowers are going to be probably maybe a tiny bit bigger than that. I'll go ahead and do this one first. Get this tall one right out of the way. So see how big I'm making it? Let those edges be really hazy and soft because when we add the little dots all around it, they'll look really cool with that edge, with the edges being really soft and hazy like that. And now I'll do one right here. Just let your brush run out of paint as you get to the edges. Sometimes I'll feed off the middle and come back around. There. Okay, whew. Before we go too much further, I want to draw a stem up to these because we use the color that we make for the stem in the middle of the wish flower. So I know you guys know what they look like. Um, think about the, the way they are. They have little, little tiny stems that go out and then when you blow on them, they are like a little helicopter propeller. So like, like almost like a upset in, inverted umbrella. So they curve up and then they've got the little stem that hangs off the end. So the, all those stems point out and then the umbrella part, if that makes sense, I might be just make, making it sound really convoluted, but that inverted umbrella look is on the outside edges. Don't psych yourself out with what I just said because it sounded really weird. It made sense in my head, but it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> Let's take our small brush. You might have a long pointy one like this one, or you might have a short little round one like this one. And I want to make a medium gray color. I don't want it super duper light, but I want it to show up against this dark blue background. So let's see. Take a little white and equal part of black. Maybe a little more white, a little more black. Oh yeah, this is the way it goes. You just Keep adding and adding. And then I'll hold it up to this or make a little mark. I feel like it needs to be a tiny bit darker in order for the stem parts to show in there. So I'm gonna add a little more black to this. So a true medium bordering on charcoal gray is good. And you can add a drop of water to that. Maybe the consistency of like heavy cream. So not super duper thin, but not as thick as it is straight out of the tube. And 
I'm going to make a stem that goes from the center here, right inside the flower, all the way down, and it can just end in here, or you can take it off the canvas, it doesn't matter. Looks like I had it just end right in here on the original, but either way works. Same thing here. There we go. So you can see the stems. Okay, so let's go ahead now and we want to create this sort of starburst pattern. And that, what that is, is uh, all the individual stems for the little individual wishes. So I'm just gonna come out just right about to the, close to the edge of the circle. You can do lots and lots of these. I'll hold it up to the camera. And let's do the other one. Start in the center. In fact, you can make a little dot if that's helpful for you. And go up to the side, to the side, down, down, and I just keep adding more in between each of those. And this will look really amazing when we cover it with lots of little white dots. Now I want to draw a few other little stems that really don't go anywhere, but there's supposed to be more of these. Maybe they're ones that are connected to some of these guys. Maybe they're ones where some little kiddo has already come through and blown the tops off. I want to mix a little more black into this gray that we made, so it's definitely becoming a very, very charcoal. Drop of water mixed in there. The fluidity will help you get a nice long brush stroke. And I'm literally going to come from the bottom of the canvas, real super light pressure, feather light. In fact, you can barely, you can have it so you barely hold on your brush. You don't want to drop your brush, but it's, I'm just literally, ooh, that was a really big one. <laughs> literally lightest pressure. And they just sort of fan out in a way. And like this one, yeah, it's big, but you know what I'll do? I'll just kind of branch off of it with another. This is one of those things that I added on when I made the painting. And sometimes I look back and I think, I wonder what I was thinking then. Like what made me add more stems? It's not wrong at all. But I sometimes think that it's interesting as an artist to go back and revisit whatever inspired you with the painting you did several years ago. Okay, we're getting close to where we'll be done pretty soon. This painting is fun and it goes pretty quick. And it's, uh, like I said, just a really nice painting when it's all finished. Now we get to dot like our life depends on it. <laughs> so I want to use the handle of the little brush, whether it's a little, the long handled one or another one. And I stamp it in the white paint. And I'm just going to stamp little dots all over some of these down here. And go beyond the hazy edges. It looks way better if you do that, if you go beyond the hazy edges here and there. And one thing I know I did uh, and as I'm looking at the original, I treated these like a gust of wind is coming in and it's causing some of these, here I'll do it right now, causing some of these to trail upward in a little line, almost like rising soda bubbles in the bottom of a glass of soda. So this is uh, what gives it kind of a magical feel, almost like a fairy-like feel. Little fairy forest, little fairy party going on down here. I like that. Someone told me once, one of the students, that they love my paintings because they so have such a magical quality. <laughs> and I guess I can see that now. I definitely do like that sort of feeling.
Now you don't have to load every single one of these up with dots, just, you know, randomly tuck some down in here. You could take the time to make every single one of these really loaded up with dots, like, like these big ones will be, but you do not have to. Maybe this is a good, a good, like, get your mind off things sort of activity to do, so if that's the case, work away at it. Dot it up as much as you want. I think it'd be kind of fun to, I've said it before in this video, but I think it would be fun to do this in a very colorful version. Like uh, for Trinity's group, I sent you guys with the Bahama blue color and that would be a really cool color to make your wish. Some of these, you don't have to make every single wish flower with that color, but you absolutely can. Or you can do a combination of the white with the turquoise. Now I'm giving all you guys ideas. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to do Mountain Wishes version two. <laughs> I remember my dad always used to yell at me when I would blow on these <laughs> in the yard. I see now as an adult why. Because <laughs> basically I was just planting more what he considered weeds. But you know what? I have a friend who's a landscaper. And he, in fact, he, um, he started as a landscape company, but now he grows native plants. And like he said, it's only a weed if you think it's a weed. And he's right. As a kid, I loved the yellow dandelions. And you know, my parents didn't like them popping up in the yard, but to me it was like, those are so pretty, they're yellow, they're adding color. And then they get these fun little puffs. So it's only a weed, if you think it's a weed. My HOA doesn't know anything. <laughs> Almost done with these dots. I'm gonna put a few rogue ones hanging out. They're flying high in the sky, lifting off from the ground, ready to plant more seeds. So right now they're all pretty tucked down in here. And I'm going to add a few trailers. They're, they're coming way up here. Ready to go party with the trees up here. I want to show you something you can do to make a tiny glowy orb. You can take and dot a little dot on while it's still wet. Use your finger and smudge it into a little orb. And then come back and dot it with a little nucleus center. <laughs> and just add little dots around it. Okay, lots of little wishes, soda bubbles, whatever helps you visualize it. And now we need these ones because they are looking lonely and bare. I do cover them just like I did the, like this one's nice and covered. I do the same thing with these and I have some that are flying off. Like the wind is coming through and they're just starting to lift off. So here's, I'm just gonna start by crowding a bunch of these little dots all around throughout the center. So you'll have little bits of those stems we painted showing, but they're not going to be as noticeable as before, which is probably a good thing because they ended up being a little out of place looking. Make sure that you're bringing your dots beyond the edge of the hazy orb because it really does look better that way. It's less confined looking and gives it more of a fluffy 
edge, which is how they look. Make sure when you are done dotting it up that you clean off the handle of your brush because in the studio we we do this technique for stars all the time it's almost <laughs> almost every painting we use the handle of the brush for something and uh, students are usually you know in a hurry to follow the next instruction so forget to wipe off the handle of the brush and so I've got a lot of brushes that have this drag glob of paint on the top and it makes the next person who does dots it makes it they're kind of out of shape and blobby looking. So I usually will try to pick them off if that happens in the studio, but at home, just wipe it off when you're done. Save those brushes. Now I'm gonna do the little trail. It can start off kind of wide at the top here and then just sort of wander off. It's like glitter. Now this guy gets a turn. I did this really fun painting of um, dandelion puffs, wishes, whatever you want to call them, a couple years ago. I guess this one's probably about three years old. And it was like an up close version. And then I actually drew the individual wishes with the kind of bowl shaped, like I said, the inverted umbrella look. And teaching that painting was so hard that I, the first time I taught it, I immediately removed it from the calendar <laughs> because people's, um, their, the stem part was ending up looking really big and bulky and it was hard to get it really delicate. And so it kind of, the feel of the painting was not quite, <laughs> not quite what was, what the original looked like. So I thought, well, Sometimes that happens. Put one out on the calendar, it doesn't work out. That's why sometimes you'll see paintings that are, I have customers that'll ask, what happened to that one painting? And I'll have to tell them, I'm honest, I'll just say, you know what? Nobody did a good job with that one. And uh, so once in a while that happens. Usually I have copies of those paintings though, so that I, sell, I sell them in the studio for like $5. So if there's one certain one that you remembered from years ago that you haven't seen on the calendar, chances are I might have it. <laughs> okay, so this one's also gonna trail off. Maybe I kind of like the same direction, but I don't know, wind kind of sort of does this snaky thing sometimes, so it doesn't really matter if you make the direction they fly off different. All right, that looks pretty good. I have one for whatever reason, I'm sure, just looking at the picture, I'm sure it might have been a happy little accident. But I have a tail on one, almost like it's a comet. I'm not gonna do it on here though, because it, it looks kind of funny. I'm just gonna be honest, it looks kind of funny. Maybe I'll add one or two more little smudgy orbs. Now's the time that I would go back and grab my glass and figure out, is there anything that I want to fix up? Is there anything I want to add before I have you do this sunburst that comes out? This is still fairly wet, so I, when I do my sunburst, I don't want the rays to come out and cross over that, or that would make a huge mess. It would just streak all of these down and would be like, you'd have to come back in <laughs> with your dark blue and black mix and start over. So I'm gonna leave that. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. If desired, you can use one of your small brushes and you can mix up this beigey gold color, which was white and the gold color. 
Not a lot of paint in the brush. I have barely any, but if you want, you can add a few subtle highlights on some of these background fir trees. These ones way back here. You could even put them on these guys. I'm gonna try it with just some gold. I feel like the light color is maybe taking it away a bit. Like it's making it blend in with the background a little too much. I think just the plain gold looks really nice because it gives it that warm color and it doesn't take away from the, it doesn't make these look like that. You can leave them just as they are. I'm known to go extra sometimes. But I do like to show options. Why not highlight them if you want? Bring some highlights down in here so we can see all oh, these trees keep going. Not a lot of paint at all. We want it to dry quickly and we don't want too much because when you have too much on your brush and you're just adding a hint of something on top of something that already exists, you can, you'll have to try to figure out, oh, I've got too much on my brush, Where where's it gonna go now? And you just keep brushing and brushing and brushing and finally you've got, instead of adding a, a hint of something, you've added a glob of something. My sun is here, so I'm highlighting the left side of each of these, but this one I'll be highlighting the right side. And just using straight up gold. Very small amount of paint. It's just a subtle little warm touch. You can get some of these sound wavy looking ones back here too, as desired. I like that. It is not really in the original. It looks like there's maybe a couple accidental parts where it was unintentional highlighting, just paint smearing in. But I think that it looks great. I'm ready in just a minute to add the sunburst. Before I do that, maybe I will add a little more white paint to the sun, especially if it just really ended up, as it dried, if it ended up looking way too subtle. Start in the center and work your way out, kind of like the way you do these. Just so it has like a hazy edge. Go ahead and finish up what you're doing. We are done other than the sun ray, which is 100,000% optional. <laughs> It's totally optional. You don't have to add that on. It can be tough to know how little paint you have to use. I will show you how little paint you, you use. Some people like to add it and some people are like, nope, I love it the way it is, I'm not touching it. And remember, you can paint around the edges and paint the bottom edge, top edge. I usually will do like one side and then get done with the painting and realize, oh, I just sort of forgotten, didn't, got busy and didn't do the rest. So this almost dry. Mainly, like I said, I don't wanna brush down into that and smear all these little dots. That would be a tragedy. <laughs> it would be fixable, but it would require some work. I probably am okay. Um, this isn't so close to that that I, I probably, will, will know how much paint to use to not drag down in there. And the longer I speak here, the longer it's the more it's drying. Let's talk about what brush we're gonna use to do that sun ray if you're going to do this 100% optional thing. I like to use a flat brush. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever done it with a round brush in the last several years. But you wanna make sure it's clean and dry just, I mean, damp dry. Just dry it off really good with your towel. Ugh, mine still has a little blue coming out of it. You might actually start with fresh, clean water for this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that because I don't want to get up mid-video and be like, wait for me, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so I want to take and dip this brush Pick up a little tiny roll of paint. That's what Bob Ross calls it. A little roll of paint, a little white. And then I'm going to brush it off. 
on the palette. So then it looks like I have hardly anything on there. Probably, I probably have too little. And I'm going to brush outward. There, it's a, you can tell there's paint coming off, but it's really super hazy. And I want that, I want it to look hazy. And you might have to re-dip and re-swipe. You can go up. Basically, it's a burst. It bursts out on all sides from the sun. I like to do it over here where it comes over the dark. It looks so nice, but make sure your dots are dry, please, or you will have some cleaning up to do. Sometimes I'm just working on one stripe at a time so that I'm not adding too much paint all at once. They can stretch way far out here. I like that. It's, this is such a like Oregonian looking painting. I guess it could be like Washington or Northern California too. I'm going to clean up the sun with just a little fresh white because I ended up having a little hazy blue in my brush. There we go. I'll see, I could go over this. Now I'm getting risky. There. Ugh, that last brush stroke I did. Isn't that usually how it works? It just didn't look so good. So a lot of times I'll just use my finger and sort of make it less noticeable. But, oh, I got a blue drop of water here. I'll clean that off. Okay, now I am officially done. This is Mountain Wishes and fun painting to do, very easy with a couple more challenging parts, the trees. And I would love to know what part was challenging for you. You can comment below at any time and um, introduce yourself or tell me that you did the, the the video with me. Send your pictures. I love to see those. You can send them via our chat link on vango.com. And then if you'd like to see more projects, we've been adding them um, as we can get videos filmed. We have a lot of adult projects, but then we've been adding some one hour kid classes too that are for ages six and up. And those are really fun. I usually teach most of those and um, obviously not drinking wine or anything while I do that. <laughs> Might think about it, but <laughs> I kind of do it. And uh, yeah, so have a look. We've got those on gobox.com, which is G-O-G-H-B-O-X.com. And they're just listed under individual projects. So you don't have to have a subscription or anything like that. You can just buy the individual projects. We'll ship it to you. And yeah, I think uh, this is a, a fun one to do. I'm gonna sign it. I get to choose what color I wanna sign it with. So, you know, I think I'm gonna mix white and blue and just make a pale blue. You'll want to mix a drop of water in when you sign your painting and use the smallest brush you can get a hold of. And I just usually will put my initials in one of the lower corners. And that is officially it. If you'd like to see more videos, you can subscribe to the channel. You can click the little bell icon to get notifications. We've been posting videos daily lately. Uh, next week I'm getting ready to uh, launch watercolor. I got all the little bottles and and um, that was the hard part is figuring out what what exact bottles I wanted to use for liquid watercolor. That's what I'm going to use at least to start. So have a great rest of your day and hopefully you guys will paint again soon. See you later. <laughs>